today's guest is a young man who, um, and, an, and an adult man who has long been a confidant and inspiration uh, and a friend to me in this business. Uh, he gave me my first job on television um, as a host of his hit show, Deal With It. That was a hit, but also was not a hit, and we, we, they, we didn't get any more episodes, but, but still we did good. He's created countless amazing projects over the years, from Bobby's World to uh, The Voice and Gremlins. He's a judge on America's Got Talent. Um, he's an amazing family man. Uh, he really has been uh, someone special in my life. He's got a new special on Showtime. It's his first in 20 years. And his new hit show, Deal or No Deal, is back on CNBC. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Mr. Howie Mandel. Electrolytes, apparently. Oh yeah, you look different. Ten cow mango clementine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which also is a name. Which of a, is like one of the candles. Which is also a girl I used to date in uh, middle school too. Mango clementine. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was a very uh, unique lady, you know. Oh wow. So she bruised right, easily, but... though. She bruised easily. <laughs> And really? I don't, yeah, I just saw her fall on the playground once. Oh, yeah. okay. Because thank God you. Yeah, no. Right. Because what you think bruising easily could be uh, construed as. And also, bruising easily sounds like a famous fighter, wasn't it? Bruising easily? Yeah. That's a good name for a fighter, I guess. Yeah. Um, I can set your coat somewhere, Ali. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's candles and then. A... <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> no, I, and you know what? This is. Uh, I love what you've done with the place. Howie Mandel in the FDR biopic right here. You think you could play FDR? Do I look like FDR to you? I think you have to put on some weight. I know. You know, to be honest with you, I'm Canadian. You know that. Oh yeah. yeah. So I'm not. I know who FDR was, but I'm not really familiar with the this look being close to an FDR <laughs> I don't, look. I don't know. Oh, because oh, of the because, wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, I'm just thinking the wheel, it seems oh, like you're dialed in. I see what that, now. <laughs> there you go. I can see I, it. I got it now. Um, thanks for coming, Howie. Yeah. The reason I put my coat on my lap is because when I do podcasts, mm -hmm. I pee. Really? Well, yeah, and especially if I'm drinking. A lot. Oh, well, we get you fully hydrated, too, and that's why we got that plant right there, too, if you want to drop a little Which is in another there. dueling <laughs> scent. Everything's about smells. Here. We got a lot going on in here. You do, yeah. Okay, and we got Howie Mandel in here today, um, dude. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I'm, I'm a huge fan huge of you. Fan of you, as a human, as a uh, comic, and also in your love of hamsters. Oh, thanks, brother. Or guinea pigs. Both. We used to sell them. No, I know. At oh, concerts, yeah. you told me you sold oh, yeah. them at concerts. You had truckloads. Yeah. And Fifty then, to a truck, that's the legal amount. There is a number. Oh yeah. Fifty, no matter how big the truck is. Mm -mm. Oh, well now I don't know about that. But fifty was at, was that enforced? To a like did anybody come and count your hamsters? You got fifty two here, man. Uh, you crossed yeah. the line. I need you to uh, you're gonna have to leave two on the roadside here, brother. You know? You have to send two on their way. Um no, we what didn't say that. is that a line? That's in uh Louisiana, I think. California, how many hamsters are you allowed oh, in a truck? Probably one, and it better have a, and it better, it's probably have to be a service hamster, you know? Which is not crazy now. Mm -hmm. There was a woman I just saw a couple of weeks ago that took a service squirrel on a on a flight. That's, and she's really upset that they took her service squirrel. What calming effect could a squirrel have? Yeah. I get a hamster, Ooh, a hamster's yeah. nice, but, but a squirrel is no. not a calming effect. Are they a rodent? Is a squirrel a rodent? Oh, dude, look. I mean, don't say it to their face, but yeah. I, uh... I'm i always wondering because uh, you ever have a squirrel run in front of your car? Oh, yeah. But it, it gets like halfway across the street and then it's like, oh, I forgot something. And then it runs and it goes, no, nah, I don't need that. And then it runs back. It does, it's, 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 squirrels are the probably the worst decision makers <laughs> in the rodent world, I, th I feel. Oh, it's the Lord's don't anxiety. Pardon? Oh, it's Mother Nature's Tourette's. I mean, it's the you know, it's Mother Nature's anxiety. I feel like it's just like a, you know, it's like an embodiment of anxiety. They seem like anxiety, don't they? They really do, and they run back and forth. Yet, 
they really focused on one food group, just nuts. Yeah. They just gather nuts. Yeah. And it's not, they made a decision there, but that's like the only decision yeah. they made. They're, they're going up the tree, they're down the tree. They're up the thing, they're across the, across the road, back across the road, back across. They can't make any decision, but. But nuts. Dinner. Like I'll say to my wife, where do you want to go? She goes, I can't decide. You decide. I go, why can't you be like a fucking squirrel? Just make a decision when it comes to food. Just nuts. But my wife will go straight across the road without right. you ever turning back. So See, my wife is so much, to me, I love her more than squirrels. Really? I do. Oh, I do. I could see that. How is your wife doing good? I think she's fantastic. Yeah. I think she's fantastic. 40 years. Wow. 40 years. Not old. That's how long we've been married. Yeah. 40 years. And does it feel, do you still feel like. Oh, that'll be a good shot. Your, your partner in crime here, your producer is oh, yeah. taking an iPhone shot of us Yeah, from above. Oh yeah. Like he couldn't hold that higher. <laughs> yeah. it's, we're in the same room. He stood up to take the picture. Is this an edict from you? That's how he does it. No. No. You, you said, I only look good from 90 degrees above us. That's how we look. But oh, I mean, dude. he's sitting above oh, us, angular? but he stood up. I, I, I'm he just saying, more. I don't mind that there was a picture he taken, but he's taking it from the like the yeah. ceiling down. <laughs> a, he wants to see it all. Yeah. Normally, uh, I get a better angle, but you brought your entourage here today, so I don't yeah. have as much room. You did. I didn't, it's not an entourage. These are your <laughs> friends. Are these people... Hey, Rich. What's up, man? Are these people uh, filming you all the time now, Howie? What's going on? I thought they're filming you. No, Mike Binder said they were here to film you today. Mike Binder phoned me to tell me that you're a big part of his documentary. Do you mind? I hear you're doing Theo's. Do you mind if the camera's here? Oh, wow. So yeah. this is your, it's weird to have an entourage that you're not even claiming. Yeah, it's a non-entourage, dude. It's not mine. <laughs> it's not mine. So yeah, so it's. Well, that's why maybe I, entourage is French for <laughs> is. people who wander in for no reason at all. Yeah, peeping Tom's. Are you here for Theo or are you here for me? Equally, right? Uh -huh. But Mike, you work with Mike Binder. Uh -huh. yeah. And Mike Binder is doing a, a documentary on the comedy store where yeah. we both work. Right. And uh, and so, and you're a big part of the documentary. You're a big part of the documentary. I sat down with him. Did you sit down with him? I mean, I sat down with him. So we did the exact same thing. So he's the one that called me and said, I hear you're doing Theo's podcast. We're, Theo's a big part of this. Do you mind if we have cameras? I go, it's up to Theo. This That's is Theo's podcast. It's Theo's office. This is Theo's entourage. I got one guy named Rich there that's oh, yeah. with me. Oh, I've seen and Rich. And you man. have the whole camera crew. You got a, a guy I don't who know likes these to guys. take pictures from above. I don't know them either. Okay, well. What's, what's your names, guys? Bert. That's Bert. Bert, Bert what? So they're guy, the two guys named Bert. Okay. It's like Bert and Ernie, but there's no Ernie. They're just <laughs> Bert. It's Bert and Bert. It's that twins, dude. And I think twins, if you're twins, fight it to the death. Figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Really? The fact that there's two twins, that they're, yeah, figure it out. What do you mean? What are you saying? <laughs> I, I, would, I would love to have another. No. Really? Dude, if you, if they had two Howie Mandels, you wouldn't be able to stand it. I would love it. No. What Talk are you going to do? Multitasking. No, no, he's not going to do what you want him to do. You know, I'm from Canada and in Canada. Do they have the, twins there? Well, the legal rule is you can only have up to 50 <laughs> Howie Mandels in a car. <laughs> I think that's the law. I think that that's the law. I could see that, dude. Bro, if, he, if there's ever more than one Howie Mandel, I think the earth will stop spinning. Wouldn't you love to just fuck around with somebody that like just have a good, with somebody who is identical to you? You don't think that would be like the ultimate prop for life i mean if you could now seriously if you could can if you could get them to do what you wanted to do but i have a feel like the way the that everything's even in the world kind of in mother nature and stuff i think that they would they'd become this the dark you know they'd be the dark side do you know any identical twins oh yeah dude it and wasn't dark? welcome where i'm from it wasn't super welcome you know really oh dude it's it's basically just you know it's familial witchcraft, really, when you think about it. When you think there's somebody who's going to look just like you, they're going to eat like you, finish your sentences. Oh, I wanted, I, I wanted, I wanted to be a twin. I wanted to make twin. You know how much time I spent um, with a. Uh, I used to try to slice my sperm in half. No, just to, you didn't really. I tried. I didn't know how. I didn't know how these things came to be. Man. So I just wanted. 
I would like to uh, be a twin, mm -hmm. have twins. I think twins are cool. Will you guys have any more children? You have three children right now. I have three children, and now the children are having children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my daughter, uh, who had her second child, has just turned 13. So we're trying to... <laughs> talk to her and tell her not to be so open and friendly with everybody. But you know what? Grandchildren is the byproduct and it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's a different time, man. It really is. It's so weird when your kids are having kids. Is it? It really is. It's better. Had I known how good it was going to be, I would have tried to, why well, couldn't? I was going to say I would have done that first, but I did, you can't. Have more kids? No, had grandchildren. Straight to grandchildren? Yes. Oh, wow. That would be amazing but i love uh, having grandchildren is my uh is my lifeblood now yeah i like that yes it, but my kids are old my kids are adults my kids are working and doing well and uh that makes me happy yeah it's now do the grandkids think that you are it do grand the grandkids think you're pretty cool what are they how do they behave toward you they they love me and they think I'm cool. It's my kids that don't think I'm cool. Yeah, you know it's really weird because I always I always assumed you know my kids were born and I was already in this. When my when my first daughter uh, Jackie, mm -hmm. who has a Jacqueline Schultz uh, Life with Jackie, she has her own YouTube uh, and Twitch. I've been on it before. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she um, was born when I was already on a series. So I always thought in my mind that if I was the child of somebody who was on TV mm -hmm. or was touring or was a comedian, I thought it would be cool. But what I learned to realize is when you're born into it, mm -hmm. that's just what it is and everything else is cool. So everything else was cool but me. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's like, so yeah, whatever you're born, it just seems like from the outsider's perspective, oh, that would be the cool way to be. Right. But like she would say as a little girl, she would say, you know, the cars on the freeway, you know, Josh's dad sells those cars. Right. I go, but I do comedy. I know, but Josh's dad sells those <laughs> cars, you know? So she's, when you grow up into it, just like you, you tell me about your life and it's no big deal. You told me all about gay chicken and stuff. And, oh, then, yeah. <laughs> and I think that those are fascinating stories, but to you, that was just Thursday. Yeah. That was just regular times. Yes. But, but to you, it sounds interesting because it's different. Your world seems different. Just yeah. you growing up in your world with 50 hamsters in your truck. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Now, you're not married or have kids, mm -mm. but you would think that they would think it was cool if their dad was driving around with, well, if you had 51 hamsters, my yeah. dad's a rebel. But, <laughs> yeah. but I would imagine if they were born into that, it would be no big deal. And hamps, people call them hamps these days too. Really? That was a slang term, yeah, because sometimes you're in a hurry, you don't have time to say hamsters, you know? And you sold them at concerts. Yeah, we sold them outside of... Uh, Hall and Oates. You ever heard of that band? Yeah. Yeah. Daryl Hall and John Oates. Yeah. Why, uh, why would the Sublime. Hall and Oates... It, it, this is so eclectic. Sublime and Hall and Oates. Gerald Levert. <laughs> or Eddie Levert. And I hate to say that. I, I love the Levert's music, but I don't... Some of them have passed away, and so I don't know which one it was. This the hamsters when, or no, the Leverts? The Leverts. The hamsters will pass away. You know? How long does a hamster, what is that. the lifespan of a hamster? Oh, a good one? An honest one? I would say probably, I'd give any hamster ballpark. Now, I'd say We're, go ahead. 11 months overall, if you average out all the hamsters in their life. Wait, lifespan, they don't even live a year? I would say at the rate that people don't take care of them. Yes, I would say statistically a hamster lives 11 months across the board of all time. But a good hamster, one that you take care of, one you love, one you keep, you know, near yeah. water, hydrated, you know, you touch, you massage its back, they get hip dysplasia. So you massage its back and stuff sometimes. Oh, I think it'd be with you for nine years. Maybe they get hip dysplasia because you're stamping Hull and Oats or Levert okay. on their back. <laughs> well, okay. You shouldn't be putting band it's names times, on hamsters' man. backs. Different times. And hamsters were wild. You remember how wild animals were when you were growing up? I know, but I don't understand going to a concert. I bought a t-shirt at a concert. Right? I bought a beer at a concert. Okay, text. And they're saying, beverages. guess where I was last night? <laughs> Look at my hamster. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's different Hall and times. Oats. It's different times. I didn't know you liked Hall and Oats. Well, look at it. I bought two hamsters. Yeah, I got that Ariana Grande double ham, brother. It's different times, you know. We used to sell hamsters, G pigs, um, and then when people. What start, is the difference between a G pig and a hamp? I feel like okay. I'm well, a hamp very like. small. Hamsters are not as friendly. Well, let's pull up a picture of each one, if you don't mind, Nick. 
Wait, 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 wait. How do you tell, what do you mean hamster, hamster's not friendly? No. But a, a G pig is friendly. Oh, yeah. And when you and are you're looking like at a pigs. rodent, okay, there they are. What makes, like, the, there's the guinea pig and the hamster, and which one is the verses? You have them in the picture versing each other. They do, yeah, that's a contest somebody does online. Can you give me a better picture of a guinea pig just by itself? Solamente, por favor. And these are dining, they eat them in somewhere, Peru. No, they don't. Yeah. Look at that beautiful animal right there. So is that friendly or not friendly? Like, how do you know yes. whether one's friendly? That is friendly. Guinea pigs are very friendly. And they get nervous. I can't though. tell They're the like difference you. between the guinea pig and the hamster. I don't understand the difference. I guinea don't. pig are beautiful, bigger. You know, you look like a, they look like a traveling buddy. They look like they can survive a s storm. Hamster look very. Have you ever been in a storm with a guinea pig? Oh yeah, I mean we grew up in lightning storms, all kinds of stuff like that. And you find during uh, storm season that there that a lot of the hamsters are dying and guinea pigs are living through the storms. Is that what you said, or it's the other way around? No, hamsters are, I mean, they're higher off the ground. If there's a flood, they're going to be able to withstand that first inch is even hit their nose. But a hamster's, you put a hamster in an inch of water, man, it's a wrap. So would you be able to predict weather or how bad weather is based on the uh, I couldn't. survival of a... I couldn't. Okay. Somebody could. If you Let's see go. hamsters scurrying away, rain's coming. Yeah, like if all your hamsters try to get to a high area, if they try to get on the top of an anthill, then that means rain's coming. You know? Wow. So when they say scattered showers, mm -hmm. the scattering is really, they're referring to the... Showers of hamps. The hamsters. The showers is the rain. The okay. scattering is the hamsters, is the hamsters. leaving the area <laughs> to get to make way for the weather. <laughs> wow. This is, I had no idea. And I thought I was doing your podcast, but this is like being on a real, uh, uh, like a weird segment of Animal Planet. Oh, it's like a really bad nature show. Um, scattered showers also probably, I'm sure, you know, it seemed like a ger like something you would have in like the kind of in the germaphobe world. People would talk about scattered showers. Well, so what a homeless person goes through. That's true. Yeah, scattered showers. Not all the time. Uh -uh. Just it's scattered. I showered in February, and I'm going to do something next year. And I'm going to wash up right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's I'll my see. biggest fear. Of uh, you know, I my heart goes out to uh, homeless people, and I do uh, when I pass somebody, I'll give them cash mm -hmm. and soap. Oh, really? That's I a good will. idea. Yes. I could see that. If you would have done it, if you could, if, if there's a different business, because you work in a lot of different businesses, you know, stand up, you know, show development, production. Um, you know, I know that you also do like, you know, some real estate stuff here and there. Like yeah. you like to be proactive. I am. You always are. I am. Um, and what is another job, like something maybe you would have done if you had it, more time? I like to, I like creative. I like being creative. I'm yeah. doing things now. I've tried, it's not going to happen, but I, uh, you know what I'm doing now? I, I like board games mm -hmm. and mm, what I was doing. I see that. I do. I like Monopoly and I took a lot of that. I'm taking, it's not, I don't know that it's going to catch on, but you mm -hmm. know, little houses that you have in Monopoly. Yeah. The red and green one. Yeah. Red and green ones. Yeah. The green ones are the homes. Yeah. I glue those to, I not glue like permanently, but I, I stuck them to my uh, testicles. Oh, really? Like around the back of the testicles to around the front of the testicles because I'm trying to create my own cul-de-sac. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh my God, dude. What? That's so ridiculous. Why? Just because it is, man. It's got to be. Did you just hear yourself say it? It's That's called a sack, which is French. I like that. It's French. Do you, uh, would you ever be French, you think? Would I ever be French? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm Canadian, so that is our second language. I grew up. You didn't have, speak French. Uh, uh, je parle un petit peu. Wow. Yeah, which means I speak a little bit. Uh, I do, uh, and I have a business in Canada, and it's uh, half of it is French. Really? You know, I buy, you know this. I, I am one of the partners in JFL. In right, just, yeah, that's just true. For laughs. That's right, I knew and about And just that. for laughs, the head office is in Montreal, Canada. <laughs> I'm taking calls now. Wait the lines are open. This is my wife, Terry. I'm with, I can't talk to you now because I'm with uh, Theo Vaughn. She loves you. I heard that. <laughs> she said your hamster and guinea pig stuff is her favorite comedy stuff. Oh, she's my favorite. But what about my, the thing that I do with no. the, okay. No. no, she hung up on me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. Aww.
she hung up on me. Were you ever in love before your wife? Like even as a kid, was there like another girl that you were? Because mm -hmm. you, you and your wife got married young, I, the, right? My, right before my wife, I went out. This is like a full circle with identical twins. No way. Well, a an identical twin. I didn't take them both out, but I pretended I did. <laughs> I always I had to think like each night I was with somebody else, but it was really the same <laughs> one. But I knew she was a twin, so in my mind. I was like a real mover, you know, yeah. and, oh, which one are you tonight? <laughs> and she'd get mad at me and broke up with me. And then I met Terry and I've been married to Terry ever since. But yeah. yes, I went out with other people before Terry. Yeah. I did. It's not like, I, I don't know what you're asking, but it is, was it an arranged marriage? No. 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 It wasn't. In Canada, we do things similar to they do the, the way they do it in the United States of yeah. America. Yes. You can meet somebody and on your own, make a decision. And I married this woman. Mm -hmm. I married this, I talk about it in my act. People say, are you, 40 years, 40 years to the same woman? Mm -hmm. And I tell them, no, uh, well, <laughs> the girl I married was like uh, this young party, crazy. Oh, yeah. oh I've imagined uh, Terry before, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll tell you that today, yeah. not the same woman. <laughs> <laughs> Things change. How does a how does a marriage change really over time? Like, what are some things that really kind of change about it? Like, um, what's that like? Uh, it's just noisier. It's the <laughs> same, and it's noisier. And the noises don't come out of like when we were young. There were a lot of noises, but it was usually having fun when those noises were happening. Yeah. Now it's just like sitting and yeah. getting up are the, <laughs> probably the noisiest. You would think. That's the beauty of a podcast. You got You should play a game show. Is it sex or oh. did he just sit down? <laughs> oh, right. Is, oh. You know that. Oh, um, yeah, I, oh. <laughs> Is he having sex? No, he's sitting. Yeah, he's sitting. He moved something. Yeah, it's an adjustable chair. Yeah, he's really enjoying himself. Do you? Um, actually, speaking of a game show, we could probably go into some of these game show videos that came in. Okay. For sure. We wanted to. We, you know. Everyone knows that you are one of the judges on America's Got Talent. Well, I don't know that everyone knows that, but a lot of people, millions probably. Do. Millions. A lot of different types of people too. Philippines is also one of y'all's biggest fanships is in the Philippines. They are. You want to know the truth is, I so I'm also on Deal or No Deal, mm -hmm. which I'm hosting Wednesday nights on CNBC. But Deal or No Deal is a huge was when it first appeared from 2005 to 2009 and the philippines was one of our biggest audiences in fact i went there and played it no way in manila really yes and did you use instead of briefcases did you use you know go ahead manila envelopes <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't that good, but yeah, it was good. Laugh. No, but listen. Yeah, but I could have. It, it, it wasn't good. Who better. is this girl with the guitar? This is a. Uh, we just want to. We have a couple of talents at uh, some of our. Oh, listeners you want me to say, judge? Is it okay? I would love to judge her. Okay. And okay. The, yeah, and we don't want this to be on the payroll either. We do not want to pay you the judge's salary. <laughs> we know we can't afford that. No, I do this. I judge. I don't judge for money. I okay. judge for just. I think I'm doing my. I'm doing the world yeah. good. Okay. Good. I think that everything I do career-wise set mm -hmm. brings us one step uh toward uh, one more step toward world peace oh i love that that's why i do it that's why i'm here i could see that i feel it's good look at you brought two candles together Thank that you. should hey, look be. somebody had to man let's see, let's see, let's hear it. so let's she see just one. sent a still of her playing guitar no how do you <laughs> how do i judge this, this you is, look like you can play okay let's she's go about to her name's kelsey hopkins kelsey hopkins kelsey I love hearing a woman sing, man. Yeah, do you like that? Yeah, man. Yeah, you thought that was good? I, you like know, it's okay. Room. I think it's a guy got that kind of Halsey, raspy yeah. kind of Grace Vanderwall, which was my golden buzzer. She's very good. It's just I would like to see a little more range. Yep. 
can I see a little more range? Yeah. No, because that's all she sent. Right. It was just at that <laughs> one tone, but I need to see. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's got to take it up one level. Or did you stop it before there was any range? She. That was all she sent. Yeah. That was all she sent. Not enough. Not What's enough? her name again? Kelsey Hopkins. Kelsey, you're very talented. I just think as an audition, you need to show me a little bit of, you know, like like Grace Vanderwall and Halsey with that raspy kind of oh, whispery. Yeah. You want to find, you want to like a, find what would be that, what would you call that moment when she goes to that next level? That that uh, hitchhiker. That um, Okay, hitchhiker. Yeah, I don't know where that, that word is. Oh, you know. The falsetto? Uh, what? Repeller. Falsetto? Sorry. Whatever, just rain. Escalator. Escalator. Oh my God! I once, escalate. when I was a kid, don't say escalator. I have oh. bad. Th I was there was a power failure once, and I was trapped on an escalator for over two hours. Really? Yeah. Well, that's it happens to people <laughs> still. I'm sure. Oh, um, I don't know, but I started getting <laughs> really? claustrophobic, and what they had floor called. They on? called what? <laughs> what stair were you on? In between one and two, but they sent people. <laughs> who walked up and assured me it was okay to walk down and I was out. Is this another talent that I'm about to look at? We got a couple more talents he that looks came in for really, you. Really, he looks kind of <laughs> oh, look. look at that look. That's like a mug shot. It's like a It's like at the doctor's office. His talent might be yeah. mumps. Who ripped off my ears? <laughs> this who one. I know you did. You ripped my ears off. Okay, go ahead. What this is, is from it? Johnny Book. Jo leaving the name. I <laughs> Folks, we can't make this up. This is why the relief factor Sorry. And our listeners can't see, but he took his tongue and touched the bottom of his nose, then brought it up the other out of the corner of his mouth into, oh, his, that into was, his nostril. And he, then the and he put, stuck his tongue into his nose. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, while I was watching it, I didn't realize that was a talent. I thought he was preparing to do something. Okay. He, you know, before I do this, I got to lick my nose and I'm going to clean out. Oh, yeah, and there he is again. So there's a reenactment for you, Howie. One, this two, is a kid three. who grew up where uh, his parents said, don't, uh, don't pick your nose. I won't. I'll just lick it out. I don't want to get any snot on my finger. I'll just take it directly with my tongue. I'll just jam my tongue up my nose but that's cutting out the middleman in a business sense you got to respect that a little bit. i do but I, w what i didn't love about it is mm -hmm. he did it and then his final word was sorry yeah <laughs> if you're if your talent needs an apology yeah i'm just saying yeah. you might want to rethink it yeah you should reconsider that i think another thing you could do is i would love to see somebody who doesn't pick their nose at all and just shakes their head until boogers fall out of their nose that's an old fashioned. Thing. That, well, that happens in dry climates. Yeah, that's but where where there is humidity and moisture, that'll never happen. Yeah, so that would have to be something. That's your two pieces. Of, so you have a, a whispering singer mm -hmm. and a tongue nose picker, mm -hmm. and then we have the oh, this is intriguing already. I'm intrigued. There for those that can't see what I'm seeing, there seems to be some sort of ottoman with a rose and a shoe on it, mm -hmm. and this and, is from Cindy May. I hope it's not from that same guy. 38. It says 38. Oh, it's a birthday cake, Howie. Oh, that's a cake. Mm -hmm. She's turning 38. That was it? That, that's it. So did she receive it? Did she make it? And that, that, that stiletto is edible. Oh. You, can eat, you can eat her shoe. All right. Mm. Well, whoever... Am I judging the person that made the cake? Am I judging the that person talent, who making received... making cakes. Yeah. Well, I, that was it? I, Okay. Has anybody ever done that on your show where they just bring out something and leave it and they go off stage like that's their talent? <laughs> there has been a lot of things that have been somewhat questionable. And I like that. I, you know, I'm fascinated by people, by humans who believe, you know, it's really interesting that, you know, sometimes what's going on in our own heads is not the same as what's going on on the outside to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that is most evident if you go to a club mostly with men watching men dance yeah because in their <laughs> mind <laughs> you know this is going great uh, yeah. everybody's looking at me wait till she gets a load of me and i don't know that like there's no mirror around but in his mind it's really going good yeah. and in my mind i'm going you may want to you may want to stand still. You may want to have it go differently. <laughs> yes. Was there a time period where men were good dancers, do you think? Did you ever notice? I'm not into dancing, yeah. though I judge dancing. Right. I, I don't really understand dancing. I always have a, a thought that maybe there are, you know, I believe there is life 
outside of this planet. Oh, yeah. And I would imagine that they're wondering how come when certain sounds are made that we're calling music, that we move, that we all of a sudden, like, it, there's a, that we get this kind of weird kind of shaking and moving. And I would imagine they're studying us, and dancing is the most confusing thing to people from other planets. Oh, yeah, dude. If I heard, like, a, see a sound and then see that go off, maybe. But then I guess... Like, what if you whistled and a turtle, just the right paw came out of the shell and fluttered? Like, you'd go, well, it's not that. What is that? What happens when that sound is made? What is that? Yeah. And that's what it probably looks like to uh, beings from other places. Like, they, yeah, like, we're their nature channel, kind of. Like, they watch us like that. But to that end, I always found dancing funny. And when I used to date, before I was married, I thought it was funny to be the most, I was a big Jerry Lewis fan. Mm -hmm. And I thought like really funny dancing was funny. And I used to go to a club and ask strangers, like strange women, would you like to dance? And then I would just rip a hole in that dance floor, the most obvious, the, the, the most horrible, just embarrassing. dancing asinine dancing and you know they would be some of them would just walk off but a lot many times they would just turn their back to me to try to pretend they weren't with me but that would not stop me i would come around to the front to make sure that everybody knew that this is my dancing princess and i just found that so funny oh it was God. awkward and embarrassing and funny but i'm not a dancer i watch dancing with the stars and even when you are an excellent dancer and i'm talking about the pros mm -hmm. and i'm talking about the males yeah it makes me laugh yeah i don't know why it makes me laugh. when i see people ballroom dancing right it just makes me laugh there there are positions and poses that i don't think we should do as i you know like you i tour on the road and we'll stay in hotels and they'll have like sometimes in the hotel they'll have a ballroom dancing competition yeah and i go down oh wait i have seen those and they had a polka one time too yeah and it just i could sit there for hours and watch people dance it just makes me laugh. I would love to see you judge like a dog show. Did you ever do one of those things where you judge like a, or got opportunity? I don't understand. I watch the dog show and I watch the Westminster dog love show. It. Yes, it makes me you know. And uh, Christopher Guest is one of my favorite directors and mm -hmm. best in show. Yes, that movie is really because I find that world. And what makes me laugh at the dog show is are the dog walkers. You know, those people that go out and they kind of prance alongside yeah. the dog holding the leash and then they tap it on the side and do that and lift the chin and yeah. do this and check out and then lift the tail and look at that. And shake what you, its tongue. Shake its tongue. I just think that yeah. humans, I think that that's what <laughs> we should have exactly what happens at a dog show. We should do that show for humans. Yeah. Oh, you I know? love that. This yes. is my son. This is look my son. Nathaniel, like stand a, up. Yes. Look at him. Pet him on the back. Lift his nose. Look at his chin. Look at his form. Watch Take how he his prances. Yeah. Yes. That's how Here's I, a suppository. You've been a good boy. And that's it. And that, <laughs> wouldn't it be great? Because I don't really know what they're looking at. And I don't know how you compare, <laughs> you know, a Chihuahua to a Great Dane. Yeah. Look at the uh, Bichon's cleft palate. And you're like, what is that? This guy's insane. But I love John O'Hurley. He's the guy, you know, he's is the, the guy, guy that does he, it. Well, he's the guy that does the, the announcing. He was from Seinfeld. Remember that? He's got the, uh, he talks like Ted Knight. You know, he's very like. Can we see that? Do you know who he is? The guy with the gray hair, he also hosted Family Feud, I think, before Steve Harvey. And he talks like that. That's his normal tone. No John O'Hurley. He does the Westminster Dog Show. And I think he's very serious. There he is. Really? But have you heard him? Oh, yes. Mr. I Peterman. Yes. yes, he was Mr. Peterman, but he is very serious. And notice the gait of that <laughs> dog, and it's got quite a coat on it, oh, doesn't that, it, Theo? That, oh, I'll say you this: have a hamster, sh the Westminster it's hamster, hamster show. show. You know that'd be a funny video. Yeah. We should do a we should, we should do, do a video of like Westminster, but just hamsters, and do it the same way, and have people walk. Can you put a leash on a hamster? Um. In some state, I think you have to have it on a leash in California if it's outdoors. We should do a, a giant, That'd like really so serious. A rodent. A rodent show. Yeah. Oh, uh, now it's down to our final two. The squirrel yes. is up against the guinea pig. Can yeah. we have the squirrel in the ring <laughs> one more time? Our judges are looking at the squirrel. Oh, and that squirrel dropped a nut. Did you see that, Howie? Just mm. left it right? Right there. That is not a nut.
Oh my goodness! That let's pan away from that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, wow! And look, if you—I don't know if I've ever seen this before. Look at the perk in the earlobes of that little muppet. Fantastic. <laughs> I don't know if it plays as good on a podcast as it will on video. Yeah, but we should do it. We, we should, should do actually. It. It's we a do funny a little video yeah. that. We'll get two rodents and do the Westminster rodent And get show. somebody just edit an, a rodent over a previously existing. There's a group called Bleach Media that does that kind of stuff. That they oh, do. we just take the, the verbiage from the Westminster dog show yeah. and put, so let's not do anything. <laughs> Let's just give out ideas, and somebody's probably editing it now. So Why? check out YouTube in a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, has there been an idea that you had over the years? How I know you're an idea man that, like, you had. Like, when I was young, I wrote a letter to the people that had Where's Waldo. Remember the books? Yeah. So I wrote a letter to them, and I was like, hey, I want to dress up like Waldo and just walk across America. And people would just be like, holy smokes, I saw Waldo somewhere. And then that would lead people to go and buy you guys' his books, and we'll make a real-life Where's Waldo book, right? And they never wrote me back. <laughs> so did you ever have any, did like— Did you have the address? The right address? Yeah, I went and, like, yeah. Where's the Where's Waldo people? This, it was owned by some British people, and this was probably 25 years ago. It was owned by some British people. I bet they you Because they most said- of the world, if you really want to look it up. And then, um, and, I, and, and I never got a, a message back. But I thought it was a fun idea. Yeah. I bet you didn't find the Where's Waldo people. Oh, I, I bet did. they would have done, I bet you they would. Did they answer you in any way? They didn't. He's right. They're British, though. They are? Oh, you looked it up? They didn't. Where that's is, Where's Wally. Well, Same guy. That's what they call How do you him. know? Where's Wally? You know. Ah. And you were going to dress like that in the striped shirt and the, the hat, the winter hat? Yeah, and just walk and across the country. And wear your hair like that? Yeah. And just walk across the country. I think the idea of Where's Waldo is to be totally surrounded by large groups. Yeah, I would go and to fairs and stuff. I was going to go to fa- Renaissance fairs. Um <laughs> You know, if there's ever a fire in a building, everybody goes outside. I was going to go there. I was going to go. Why wouldn't you do it any, anyway? Like, why? here's my point. My point is they would sell the books. You'd get no benefit from that. Right. Why did you need them? Like, why don't you do that? Because I just- Where's w- Theo? Right. Why wouldn't you do it? I just, I don't know. I thought it would be like a fun thing. And then they would be excited about it. It was a good idea. Why don't you do it? I don't want to do it, it anymore. Really? Because I'm older, yeah, I don't want to walk around out there. It's loud by the interstate. Like when I was young, my ears could take that kind of heat, you know, that sound heat. But I can't take it now. You know? I would do that. I'll get you, I'm going to buy you a red and white striped sweater oh, and a hat. Really? Are you? Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to do some Googling and find out where crowds are. Yeah. And I will drive you. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, you can use my Uber app. Okay. And I will drive you to various crowds and uh, your friend here, mm-hmm. what's your name? What's your first name? Nick. Nick mm-hmm. can take pictures from above, <laughs> like in the book. <laughs> and people have to find out where where's Theo? Where's Theo? Where's Theo? I think it would be good. Um, Is my, anybody even looking for Waldo anymore? I think, well, there's a new book out there that my nephew's got it called Where's My, it's Where's Michael Jackson, actually. <laughs> and it, I'm not joking. Bring it up, please. And uh, and my nephew's got it for Christmas, so it was kind of crazy because me and my nephew are sitting there. And I'm Where's like, should, Michael Jackson? I'm like, for should kids? Kids be looking for Michael Jackson? <laughs> uh, really? Yeah. He can't find it. Oh, he uh, he'll find, find it. it. He found it. Where's I don't know. Michael Jackson? Well, you can't find him. It's just a. Uh, oh, are there you it is. serious? Where's Michael Jackson? That's exact the exact book. And it's that a, is hysterical. How old are the kids that this was bought for? My nephew's five, and I, you know, he likes to dance. He's got that Billy Elliot kind of vibe, and he's. But yeah, we zoom in on one of those pictures, Nicholas, so we can see it. Oh, and you have to find. It's like Where's Waldo. Yep. Yes. But you have to find Michael Jackson, and he's in different places. He's in like a, um, where's that? A child abuse center, and then the other <laughs> one, he's at a um, pigment factory. Um, <laughs> different places westlake studio (laughs) look at that they really did put real places oh how yeah you know what's funny is i bet you're probably in this book somewhere there's all the celebs are in it all 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 stars are in it what are you talking about oh the other people are known people in the picture yep a lot of them are is that me the bald guy in the middle you see the guy with the the look on the center go go keep going there yeah is that me that's not you you found me 
I mm-hmm. think that's me. I think that's Howie. Is that is that Terry next to you in the blue shirt? With the I don't know hair? who that is, but I think that's me at the Beat It dinner. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm at the Beat It dinner. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's so weird. Well, I found myself. I love that. And it reminds me, speaking of the Beat It dinner, it reminds me of that time you got invited to perform at that orgy up in the hills. Remember that? I did. <laughs> yeah, I do. Do you want me to tell you that? Um, oh, yeah. We've talked about it. Before. We've talked about it before. Yeah, we don't need to talk I'm about wa- it again. Well, I got to let you guys know that Europeans are really clean in their junk area. And that's because they've long used bidets to cleanse themselves after using the restroom. While the bourgeois have used dry, ineffective toilet paper and never truly been clean. Until now. Bedelegance, baby. Get that hitter right here. And that's that fancy boot tile and front tile for the ladies and men. Cleanser. But Delegant's natural cleansing foam brings you the luxury and elegance of a bidet with the convenience of toilet paper. You get that 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 pa- that you know that paper, those sheets, and you hit that bedelegance with it and tighten your area up, feel fresh, feel new. You can clean and dry your private areas front and back. Better than dry toilet paper and wet wipes. It's more cost-effective and anti-inflammatory soothing. Keeps your hands dry, does not harm sewer systems, and eco-friendly. Support our small business. This is our small business for this episode. Be d'elegance, baby, be d'elegance. It's available right now on Amazon for 10% off and free shipping. Use promo code 10 T H E O V O N. That's 10 Theo Vaughn. 10 Theo Vaughn. For 10% off and free shipping, use 10 Theo Vaughn at Amazon.com. Bedelegance. Get that cleanse. I want to talk about what can we talk about that's fun? <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I love that this is such an honest. Oh, our podcast, podcast is it's totally, it's just like a just. No, but I love it. You very rarely listen to these podcasts where the guest is here and the host is here and the host goes, mm, what can we talk about? <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> Let me think of something fun. Let me, you know, it's weird because I was on Twitter yesterday and you were saying, send me questions. What do you want me to ask Howie? Oh, yeah, what true. do you want me, if you have anything that you're interested in about Howie Mandel, send it that way because he's on my podcast tomorrow. And here I am five, 10 minutes into your podcast. <laughs> Number one, there hasn't been one question from That's a true. listener. So nobody sent you anything. Wait, 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 wait. And not only that. You didn't prepare anything. No. So you are sitting there five minutes in going, oh, God, what can we what can we talk about? I well. don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody had any ideas. Nobody's interested. We uh, showed you a picture of my nephew's book. We did that. I had two viewers. I have that. Oh, we can show that guy that picks his nose with his tongue. We did that. We got him in. The... Uh, <laughs> The singer that wasn't that exciting, though yeah. she may be talented, but not right. a good choice in in. Uh, she could have given a bigger buffet of her talent. The yeah. guy, the guy who picks his nose, actually had a second talent. He did, yeah. Oh, really? Let's well, the, oh, so then I'm wrong. There was a plethora of things yeah, to do. We have works. the same guy. Yeah, here he goes. <laughs> What's this? He's pulling his neck. He's pulling the skin on his neck. And then, oh, wow, that was the, it that's go. it. Well, he does the other side. I don't know if that's a talent. I don't think it is. No, I don't think it is. He said, I don't know if it's talent, but I think it is. To and he be pulled able to the skin pull off his face a little you're bit. You're doing it too. And then let you it go. the talent. He just pulls the skin on his face. That's pretty cool playing the face Let's skin. Go. Yeah. Um, I used to do that with my testicles. Did you really? Well, you know what I did with my testicles? We, when I was a kid, we didn't have a oh, lot I'll of Oh, I'll tell money. you one. Let's match stories. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, my friend had silly putty. Mm-hmm. And if you took silly putty and you stuck it on the comic strips... Did you ever do that? It could mm-hmm. take the picture off of that. Yeah. I didn't have silly putty. Right. <laughs> but on a hot night, I would sit on the comics with and push my oh, nuts yeah. onto the... And I had, for a week, I had Beetle Bailey <laughs> on my really? left nut. Oh, I didn't dude. press it onto anything else. Dude, I can see your dag wood. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Beat that. What did you do with your nuts? Oh, dude, I remember this, man. I remember there was one point when... I didn't think that we needed our nuts. I thought our nuts were, you know, like the appendix of our body, you know, of our wiener. And Wait, I, you woke up thinking, I don't need this? Well, it seems so silly. 
It really does. Well, your wiener has urine coming out of it, and you and you know, and you can't otherwise all the to, time. No, I mean, I you know, I tie it off usually <laughs> at night, but uh, but a lot of the time, and I knew I was like, well, man, this is you know, useful piece. But then you got these nuts, and you're like, oh, well, this is something we used back in the day. You know, when we we're primates, or when we were right. just, you know, just had people with just using our. So nuts. you were trying to expedite. I was like, um, we don't need this. Uh, what do you call it when thing morph? Uh, when things change over um, time evolution uh, evolution yes. you were trying to transform yeah. but when a body part when they don't have that third finger anymore they, oh uh it's called um mutate uh not mutate. yes transmutation no something like that anyway you were trying to okay you you in your mind there was no use and you wanted to move us along go ahead so that was it so i remember talking to some people at school and being like you know i want to give my nuts away to some place that could use them or to like send them to a country where people could wow. use them, where people still use them. Because I thought people that were more primitive than us, like third world countries and yeah. tribes, yeah, like, oh, there's Because it's always them. the higher echelon of educated people that are aware that they don't need their nuts and they should mail them to other places. Yeah. Those, <laughs> that's, the, yeah. <laughs> that's the chosen race. Yeah, look. I've thought about nuts too. Have you? Yeah, I talked about how, you know, and it, depending on what you believe, but if you believe that we were created mm -hmm. uh, by God, mm -hmm. that this is an amazing art form, right? The body, oh, yeah. and especially the female body. And mm -hmm. if you look at the female body, you know, and, and if you go to Europe and you see the great paintings in the Sistine Chapel, oh, yeah. it's a, the, the body is an amazing art piece, brilliant. Yeah. You know, and the you ribs, think, dude, ribs are wild. Okay. So anyway, mm -hmm. the, but I was thinking that the, just the, and and the ability to you know this is the most important you know he, the, God made Earth and mm -hmm. made the animals and the hamsters and 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 falcons. Made, yeah, yeah. So and then and then, <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking like you know and then on the seventh day he rest he made man and woman our bodies are art pieces and yes. even the i i think that the female body is artistic yeah i feel like he they say that we were created first and then from our rib a woman was i don't th i think it's the other way around we look like he gave up yeah i think he gave up i think he made this amazing body and even gave us the penis and that's the plug that fits into the recharger so that there's more humans yeah but then it was like and then he finished and he, he went, you need something else, but I don't have time and I don't have energy. And I feel like our nuts are the to-go bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll take those to go. <laughs> and out of all the beauty, he created these two little uh, nuts in a, uh, in a, like in a crinkled up sack. Yeah. It's just like with all the beauty that has been, been created throughout the world, I don't know why this is such an ugly piece of business. It is, huh? It is. And that's why I understand you as a young man thinking we don't need this. Yeah. I love the lighting in this place. It looks like an extracurricular, yeah. It's like we don't need our nuts. We just lost one. I don't know. We did something happen? Yeah. Lighting burnout. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So people who are listening to this at home or in their car. They don't know. No, but they don't know that we're doing this. In the dark. In the dark. <laughs> Just cool. two candles. Now, that would be a new Howie show, doing this in the dark. <laughs> Why is it my show and not yours? Just because it seemed like something you would try to, you know, like, I No, I would you. never do things hey, in the dark because I want to see what's touching me and what I'm touching. <laughs> I don't, know I don't, that. Why, I don't but want But you would get other people, hey, do you want to do this in the dark? That's what you would do to them. I feel like I'm in the dark most of the time anyway. Do you? I do. I feel like things are going on and I'm not part of it. Is that true? That is absolutely true. I could true. actually understand that. Yeah, that freaks me out. Like I'm, I spend most of my time like freaked out. There's something going on and I don't I'm, know and they're not telling me and I'm not invited. And, and I want to be involved. Yeah. And then there's there's the whole world and then there's me. Yeah. I feel very alone. Do you feel an infection sometimes really though? Like I want to be involved. Like what is the thing that keeps you like, have you been able to kind of pinpoint what that thing is that make that keeps you like wanting to be in like. Yeah, fear. I'm, I'm uh, always afraid uh, that I'm left out and going to be left out. And I try really hard to be a part of it. I want to be a part of, I never feel like I'm a part of it. Right. I feel like even like I listen to this and I feel like I love this podcast and I love you and everything. I just feel like this is probably the, one of the, 
to, I'll be totally honest. This is probably one of the least interesting episodes. Really? Because I'm on it. Well, I'm not interested in anything that I'm talking about. <laughs> really? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> but no, no, is, because, the, yeah. but even the fact that, you know, I thought, the, the, like you tweeted, nobody sent, nobody sent a question. Well, we, we got, got the most. No, so that you got, you, you and the, uh, 10 minutes in, <laughs> yeah. you can't even think of anything to ask me. I'm, I don't think I'm that interesting. I don't think I'm, and I don't think people care, but that's okay. No. I'll just keep trying hard <laughs> and, you know, it's paid off off i realized like uh, if i look and stand back i've been able to buy a house and pay the rent and buy yeah. some socks so the, the thing is that it's working for me yeah but i still feel and I always was like an outsider you know as a kid in high school i was in in high school i was four foot nine and 89 really? pounds yeah but how old oh in high school wow yeah no that's I grew a smaller later. guy when i <laughs> yeah wow you are yeah, well, and, I don't know what the heights were back then. I mean, it's like... Well, the heights are the same as they are now. Heights is height. But anyway, height hasn't changed. Well, probably How not. How old do you think I am? But what if the oh, land... Oh, when I was a kid, everybody was... <laughs> nobody was more than five feet tall. I don't know. When I was a child, <laughs> the, tall, the whole NBA was five foot two. Height was the same. I was a little guy. I was a little guy Did who you wanted feel to little? be... little? I felt little. I felt like such an outsider. I looked up at the whole world... I wanted to meet girls. I couldn't yeah. meet girls. Tall girls, huh? <laughs> if if you were a girl, you were just tall because yeah. I was so little. So, you know, I just wanted uh, somebody to go up on. I I I <laughs> couldn't meet them and I found weird ways. I wanted I figured sports was a way in. Though where what sport could I be? Soccer, I, I could see you playing. No, I didn't make the soccer team, didn't make the football team, didn't make anything. So the one thing that I found without thinking about it was wrestling. Oh, so I got wow. in the wrestling team. Did you really? I did because there's an under 90 pound weight class in high school. You're like, this is for me. No, that's why they hired me. And I figured, okay, I'll just say I'm on the team. I didn't think about the ramifications. So and the who ramifications, did you wrestle? Men other, or women? Men. <laughs> So that was the thing. I wanted to meet women, and now I'm wearing a singlet, which is just like a oh, one-piece yeah. girl's bathing suit, <laughs> and I'm rolling around on a mat with another guy. This so, is yeah. not the <laughs> best path to You're meet. Not getting close. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm dressed like a girl, and I'm wrestling other men. I don't want to touch anybody. Now I'm rolling around with another sweaty guy. We're, yeah. we're just sweating together. Oh yeah, and he would pin me. And then what? That's it? Well, then we went out for dinner. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it goes on. Let's get into a couple of those questions, Nick, that came in. Well, you want to show him a picture of me? Nick's got a picture of me. Does he really? Yeah. So uh, my hair was really long, too. Yeah, and my voice hair. didn't change, and I didn't shave. I look like a little girl. One way I tried to meet girls was by going into the girls' bathroom and brushing my hair in front of the mirror. Oh, that's kind of cool. Just so that they would talk to me. <laughs> they didn't know I was a guy. Like, hey, pass that brush. Yeah. He's, uh, I think Nick is getting a picture of me. Yeah, and he'll put it in. We'll edit it in so that, um, so that we can see it. Um, One of these questions. Uh, let's see here. Oh, a question came in. Lots of them. Lots. So many, Owie. And it's hard to have a plan with you, I feel like, because you're like... No, I don't need a plan. Oh, here's a yeah. question. Isn't this the same girl that hey was guys, singing? Hey, guys. My name's Elisa. Um, I actually read something funny about Howie a while back um, that you had, you, it was like a prank in high school that got you kicked out. I think you tried to hire a construction company to do yes. something. Um, <laughs> I was just wondering if you wanted to explain that a little bit because that sounds I like a I can't explain cool it. Story. I can only tell you that. I <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I can, uh, thank you, Alyssa. She's a very pretty girl. Yeah, very pretty. Um, uh, yeah, I hired a company. I, um, I didn't have friends and I didn't have, but I loved like candid camera, mm -hmm. but I, I forgot that, you know, that's a guy with a television show who had an audience and had a reason. Right. I didn't have an audience. I didn't have a reason. So I would do- You were at school. But I would do these fucked up things for my own- <laughs> Like, it would be great if you were my friend. And I said, Theo, watch this. At three o'clock, look out the window. There's going to be a guy measuring with a clipboard. And he's going to be putting, uh, he's, he's measuring because he's a construction company. Right. And I called it. Wait till you see the guy. 
I didn't tell anybody. So I'm alone in the room looking at the guy I called out there and then I see the principal go out and I could see them gesticulating, you know, just uh, they're talking. Yeah, and I know that, that guy, the principal's saying, what are you doing in the yard? And he's saying, I got a call from a Howard Mandel uh, and I'm going to give a <laughs> bid on the addition to the library. And uh, then I saw him walk in and then I hear over the PA system, would Howard Mandel please come to the office? And I went to the office and he said, did you hire somebody to put an addition onto the library? And I said very emphatically, no, no, yeah. I'm getting bids. <laughs> and he said, wait right here. And I waited and they called my parents and my parents came in. I remember my parents just sitting there and he's explaining. They'd be impressed, I bet. My mom was biting her lip because he said, you know, your son is getting bids on an addition to the Learning Resources Center. And as if she was going to say, we told him never to do that yeah. you know she was just biting her lip like i don't know what to do but it was deemed that i had a uh a... pension for development what <laughs> <laughs> i had behavioral problems so i was asked to, i don't have a ged really no do they have that in canada though? what do you guys get they have high school yeah yeah we have high school and tv yeah. And we have, do we have cars. Yeah, we have cars. We have warm meals. Dude, when I was growing up, they had, no joke, in our classroom, it showed America. Then they had a picture of Mexico, and it was like a cactus and a man with a beer. Yeah. And then Canada, it had a, a boy in a coat getting chased by a wolf. And that was the whole. Really? Is that where you were going to mail your testicles that to? That was America. Can you imagine <laughs> being up in Canada, and then you get like, what are these Theo oh, Von testicles I got in the mail? Snacking on a pair of man eggs. I could. <laughs> Would you ever, do you think you could, if you're stuck in a snowstorm what part of your body do you eat or your friend's body do you think and be honest man please okay i will be honest i would not lie to you <laughs> okay. if i'm stuck in a snowstorm what part of my body do i eat or a person somebody else's oh the, like the the like planes that went down yeah right so you have to eat people you gotta eat something you gotta eat i would probably this would be the pro this would be the problem i would eat myself yeah I would eat myself. I wouldn't want to, I don't shake hands. Right. So it's like, I would eat myself and I would take would bites out have? of shit that, 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 that won't kill me. I would start with my, I would just eat my, le I would like, I would, I would just eat. Like, so I'd Something eat. Something local. Bites just that? whatever I can reach. And I would just take bites out of myself. Yeah. I would eat myself. Would you? I would. Because uh, be honest, and I don't know this. I think I'm tasty. Yeah. I do. I, I feel see like, that. I feel like the I'm back strap. Oh, I feel like I'm tasty. I feel like I, sometimes I look in the mirror and I go delicious. <laughs> I do because, and nobody else looks delicious to me. I could see it. Let's take another question that came in, Nick. Gang, gang. Yo, what up, Theo? What's Yo, up, it's player? Coop from Minnesota. Gang, Yo, my gang. Question for Howie is, when you were on Deal or No Deal, did you or the models know which case had what money? There you go. So did you know where the million dollars was at? No, we. I love that no, he asked man. the question. Get that hitter. Get that hitter player. Okay. Um, no. Nobody knows. Nobody, nobody knows? Nobody knows. Be right? honest, though. You seem like you would know. Why? Because you know stuff. I look smart, but I'm I'm an idiot. Really? I, no. Nobody I don't, knew on the shows. Nobody knows. And it's so... there was. A, remember that movie Quiz Show mm -hmm. that was done about the... the there was oh, a, yes. That was a the, good movie. It was. So it's based on mm -hmm. in, in the 50s, he I knew, guess. We he gave knew. Some, yeah, somebody... Cheated. Yes. And ever since that, it's like you have no idea. Our show and every other game show, there's something called standards and practices, and there's a third party. They, it is so locked down. We don't. Even our executive producer doesn't know where the million dollars is. So they have a, a another company that comes in and they randomize the cases. They take all the cases and they put the different amounts and they close them. And, eat, and then they pass them out to the ladies. And as the ladies are making their way to the stage, even if they slip a little and, and uh, a latch should open, but it doesn't open so you don't know it, we're shut down for another hour where they take the cases back and they re-randomize Wow. Them. Nobody knows. Nobody now, knows where the money's at. No. I didn't even know where the Duchess was. I had no idea that Meghan Markle, I don't know if you know that. Yeah. She was on the first incarnation of Deal or No Deal. And when you looked at her, could you tell that she was going to be like a princess now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. She had something special? She was duchessy. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't know what that meant, but I kept saying what's, she seems what's with all yeah. this duchiness? Yeah. Like what the fuck is this? Like why when I look at this girl do I hear like, you know, music from Liverpool, you know? Beatle music? Or something duchessy or something yeah, like a trumpet. It, I didn't know what it was. And now this new one which airs uh 
Wednesdays at nine o'clock on CNBC. I don't think we have another Duchess, but I think we have a dictator. Really? Yeah. Who's up in the box? Oh, who's on the show? One of the ladies. No way. Yeah. Yeah. She's hardcore. I just think that that she one day she's going to be running a country. I'm not going to mention which one, but I think if you watch, you'll see which one. Oh wow! And I'm curious. I'll check it out. And yeah, dude, I remember when we worked together, man. I was nervous about meeting you. I was nervous about meeting. Oh, I wasn't nervous. No, you were I wasn't. I felt like you didn't like me at first. Really? Yeah. No, I'll be honest with you. It's really hard to make a TV show. Yeah. And we produced, you did deal with it, you hosted it, and uh, we were shooting it, and I had a partner, Roy. Yep, Roy, Roy Bank. Roy Bank and, and I, and we were just getting, it's just, you have no idea. It's so much easier to be on a TV show right. than to make a TV show. Yeah. And be besides all the notes and all the input and all the- It's a lot know, of work. It's crazy and it was a lot of so i was under a lot of pressure yeah and that pressure kind of uh, i think showed itself i loved you from day one i actually lo loved i wanted them and fought with the network to say listen i knew that deal with it was about for those that didn't watch it or don't know you know people were asked to do things in an earpiece and it was like a hidden camera show yeah but i thought the gem of the show was when a guest would sit down with you yeah, and you would just be you like oh, what yeah. you're doing now and start talking to them. And just to watch their faces were, if they didn't know this was serious or they didn't realize they were on this planet, yeah, you had a story <laughs> for absolutely everything. And I would continuously fight with the network because I would send in, I go, this is funnier than what we're making the person do. You right. Know, stick cheese up their nose. Yeah. Listen to, Theo talked to this young lady is so funny and it, it was, was it, but doing a show is a constant fight. Yeah. Wow. You know? So you're never in a, you can't just, that's why I love stand up. Yeah. Because stand up and, and I continue to do stand up and I have a special, yeah, yeah. my first special in 20 years is on really? Showtime. Yeah. My first stand up. People don't even know I'm a stand up anymore. Young people have just seen me on deal or no deal or AGT. And, uh, you know, I have never stopped doing stand up, but people don't. But that's what I love. I love the autonomy of being able to stand there and whatever mm -hmm. happens, happens. There's no editing, yeah. there's no marks to hit, and you get that immediate response. So it must feel like a freedom to you these days to have that kind of time up It's there. my primal scream. So, as much as I, I produce and we continue to produce, that's a constant fight. And I also think that creativity mm -hmm. by community is not great like right. if you th if you want to be outrageous or something happens you don't need 20 people with notes to go that's outrageous but let's try it like this and that's what i when you saw maybe uh, uh, that was the vibe that i just wasn't having as good a time as i would like to have the best time i ever have is doing stand-up yeah yeah, I can imagine now. I can see that, especially in the beginning of the show, because it's just there's so many moving parts, there's so many things. Oh, but going you don't. On. I don't know if you're aware, but uh, how many people were um, sitting behind the scenes that you know you would say something or we would do something, and then I'd walk back and get a note from the network, or yeah. then I'd walk back and get a note from somebody who was advertising on our show, and it's like, a, and then I'd have to be the bearer of the information. I didn't want to be the principal. Yeah. You know? You want to Theo, be the they don't want to do it like that. Can yeah. you do it like this? They want to do it like that. Nine and out I was of so ten nervous, of the, too. Nine out of the 10 of the notes were not mine, but as the producer, I have to uh, take responsibility and give them to you. Is it hard to go from like being like the talent? What makes What is it that makes you want to go from being like the talent where you get to be fun and have the fun and then to go up to the next part to the producer? Is it is it that youth, like what makes like some acts Well, I'll tell you that? something. I, I like it because, well, I come, as you alluded to in the beginning of the this thing, I come from business. Yes. And I thought it would give me more control, but the more you do, the less control, the more you sell, you know, you, you sell an idea and then you have a network or uh, putting in millions of dollars and they give you notes. Millions and of notes, huh? Millions of notes. But I also like the idea, you know, I'm, this is... Uh, the dichotomy of the two things. I like the autonomy of stand-up comedy where I can go and do anything and say anything, though you can't really these days as yeah. much as you used to. But I also like the idea of having an idea and then 
lo and behold, within a month, there's 100 or 200 people on a set all doing whatever it takes for them to put together that idea and then you see your idea come to fruition. But that doesn't come without its, you know, problems. Yeah. Because more people, more problems. Yeah, that's the truth. More people, more problems. Huh. Yeah, man, it's interesting because sometimes it's like, is it better to just kind of stay in the space where you can just be funny and be the the entertainer or is it like because it does feel tempting i feel like a lot of comedians have this like we like i mean i have like a control issue where i do want to control things you know well you know and also it's also if you want to do what you want to do then you're at the mercy of everybody else to want to give you a job right so if you can come up with ideas creative yeah. ideas that aren't necessarily just jokes or material that you can use for stage if you could create it, like even you had an idea you wanted to do a podcast. Right. So boom, it comes together and now you're sitting in this palatial studio yeah. with candles of different scents and an entourage that you're not even aware you have. And that's because yes. you had an idea beyond stand up to yeah. do whatever you did. So and then you can have another idea which takes, you know, two hundred people to do and right. twelve cameras and a sound stage and, and whatever. It's also the need to work and to be creative and have ideas instead of just sitting at home and waiting for the phone to ring because there's, there's millions of us out there that are waiting for the phone to ring. Right. You and know, or you sit at home in your room like the girl you just had on playing guitar and wanting to hear how good it is on a podcast. You know, she's got a, it's really hard to get out front and in front of people. You got to do, do it. You got to do it and you got to do more than just it. Yeah. You got to do more than just it these days. You really do. Yeah. I think the difference between people who are working and people who are not working is you're working. Right. That's the only difference. You're creating just, your own stuff. They just did it. Right. You know, I, I, I had a conversation with somebody, you know, they go, Elon Musk and, you know, the pilot and the plane. The only difference between Elon Musk and anybody listening to it is he just did it. Right. I mean, he doesn't, you look at a, the, the guy that's uh, flying the plane. Can you imagine that? The guy's a pilot. Well, he did it. He did, he was, inter he or she was interested in doing that and went to flight school. And they did it. And, and you before could do they that. know it, they're doing it. Right. Yeah. If that's what your desire is, then go to flight school and become a pilot and you'll be flying a plane. Yeah. If you want to be a surgeon, go to medical school, work really hard, and you could be a surgeon. They're not different than you and me. Yeah. And they the just, reason you have a podcast is because you did it. Yeah. I didn't. Right. Right on. I didn't. <laughs> One day I just started in my kitchen, and then, yeah. And then next thing you know, yeah, we just had a podcast. But yeah, it, it is true. I remember I had, a, I had this show idea where I was having like... Um, strangers set me up with a, a blind date in their city whenever I got there to do stand-up for the weekend. Right. And it could be anybody in a real blind date where I would never see the person. And I remember like I went and did a couple of them and it was gaining traction on my Instagram. This is about five years ago. And I remember talking to a, a, a manager about it and they're like, well, let's, let's package it up and try to sell it. And then once I did that, I wasn't doing it anymore. And so then it kind of lost – the steam, it lost the excitement. Uh, and I, sh I, I But the, the truth is that you are in control of whatever you do. Right. You're saying it lost the steam. Right, it lost I lost, it. right. You lost I could the have steam. kept it going and yeah. then also tried to go sell it at the same time. Or which not. I did. Right. Just keep it going and it might have on its own snowballed into something or right. not. And that's what I'm saying. So sometimes, you know, in the, I live in yeah, the moment. that's a good point. I live in the moment, you know, whatever I'm doing right now, I'm doing right now yeah. and there's no end game. And that's what you were doing. You were doing something that was fun and kind of outrageous. And then there's no real end game. And then when somebody gives you a goal and then you're working toward a goal, you're not having fun in this moment. Yeah. And that's the problem. Yeah, that's kind of true, huh? Yeah, I wish, yeah, in hindsight, I guess maybe that's the moment where I learned whatever it is, I just need to keep doing it. And and then at least that way I'm creating and I'm producing instead of like, you know, stopping and like packaging it up. Yeah, I guess I lost. Some I of don't my stop for a minute, but that's also because I'm, a, you know, I've got mental health issues. Yeah. So I try to distract myself every minute and I stay busy and be what I do to stay busy seems to uh, turn into like work, work, you know, and would not work for the things I like to do. Who are some of the top five people you think with mental health issues, probably? You and four other people. You're at the last mental health dinner. No, I think the that, last uh, I think that anybody alive has mental health, health issues. Oh, yeah. I think very few people are able to identify it or willing to identify it or there's a stigma. I think if you're human, you have a mental health issue. Yeah. And if you think you don't have a mental health issue, 
that's uh, me- that's a mental health. Then ask issue. your wife. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But I, there isn't anything that happens. There's nobody in life. You know, there's a T-shirt that says "shit happens" and shit happens to anybody, mm-hmm. and we all need help. And whether you're dealing with what I deal with with anxiety or OCD or just you know your own uh, productive ability or your own fears or loss or sickness or just being able to be uh, productive, you know, you need coping skills. And until that becomes part of our curriculum, we'll have a fucked up world. Yeah, we do need to have that more of that in school, don't we? Like how we don't teach kids to like get along with one another and teach them like how to express their feelings and recognize like if a friend is expressing like fear or concern or those types of things. And we don't teach that. And we We teach shit. 90% of the stuff that you learn, I'm talking, you're talking to a guy with no GED, but is not useful in your life. Oh, dude. They don't teach anything that's useful. Juggling. We had juggling for a while. I'm like. What school did you? You go to circus school? No, it was just school, local school, regular school. You took a juggling class in regular school. They had it for some guy came and juggled, or maybe he was just, I don't know, he could have been a substitute teacher. Talk about being the class clown. But yeah, I know. Well, look, (laughs) in our town, yeah, if the teacher was, if a teacher couldn't make it, they just put in the next most talented person to come and teach. So at this point, it must have been a juggler, you know? So I mean, yeah, you could get anything. That's so weird. Yeah, it's a little but bit But the thing is that 99% of what, you know, I say this, you know, I'm in real estate and I'm in business and I, I say this ad nauseum to everybody around me, but it's fourth grade math. Yeah. Once you have the math of fourth grade, once you learn how to write, once you, you don't even have to know how to write anymore, but once you learn how to write and you know how to add and subtract and divide until you figure out exactly what it is you want to do unless it's a, a specific skill like a pilot or a surgeon or a, an engineer you don't need any more to get along in life but you do need social skills which aren't professionally taught you do need people you know it's i i say this people take care of their dental health they don't take care of their mental health you know you yeah. will brush your teeth every day and everybody goes for a checkup and says look mom no That's cavities but nobody there's brush no, your brain right you gotta and nobody is sitting there, all this shit that's going on in our world and these mass shootings it. and things like that. There were red flags yeah. years and years ahead. And these could have been identified in five and six-year-olds. Yeah. And they weren't. Boy, this got serious. That's okay. This podcast is kind of serious. I mean, this podcast is really pretty just serious. It's never, it's not even really, it's never really even funny. Never. I don't know if it is. Is it? It's got a good mix of both. I, yeah. And it goes, all the conversations, they go in waves and that's what people like. Yeah. It goes in waves. That's what people like the most on our on our podcast is just kind of regular, just chatter. Do um, let's let's pull in another question then that came in for Howie. What's good, Theo? What's good, Howie? I just want to know. And then bitches out there who broke your heart, let me know who broke your heart, Theo, Howie Mandel, because they're breaking mine right now. The break of mine right now. Okay, I don't know who that is. He's, Somebody, he's heartbroken. That's Voldemort. Is he heartbroken? Is he's he? just sitting in his bed at night with a comforter. <laughs> he didn't even turn on the light for the fucking question. Because <laughs> of the depression. <laughs> no, I don't know. That guy seemed pretty healthy to me, man. And it looked like he was playing that Dutch oven game, too. He was kind of covering himself with his blanket. But did You don't think he bro- was building a tent? Oh, I mean, he might have been. Look, Both, a Dutch oven and a tent. Yeah. <laughs> Because he can only jerk off to the smell of his own shit. Oh, damn. Now, that's an old-fashioned trick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's an old, that's definitely an old-school wow. trick. Who broke my heart, man? I remember the first girl I ever loved was this girl named Chrissy Hunt. She had a chipped tooth, and I'd never seen that on a woman before. Wow. And Sounds just, sexy. Oh, yeah. Was and, it in her mouth, or oh, she yeah. just carried it around? <laughs> no, no, it was in her Look mouth. Look what I got. I got a chipped tooth. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, well, that would have been beautiful. That's I like, got my heart broken a lot. I, I get you? my heart broken. Yeah. But by who, man? Who Not was no. she? Nobody liked me. I was, f- I told you, I was four foot nine, 80. It was like, I. Oh, I'd I love that fu- little guy, bro. If no, I, four I was foot not. Nine, you, dude, I'd fucking put you in a sweatsuit wow. and just fucking hug you. <laughs> I would, Howie. No. You know I would. I just live with a broken heart. And even now, I got to tell you, and with social media, my heart gets broken each and every day. Really? Yeah. But I can't stop reading it. Mm-hmm. I can't stop taking in the pain. Yeah. <laughs> but people are mean. They don't like me. They turn me off. My heart is broken. T- I've talked about this many times, but 
even at the height of my notoriety in the 80s, you know, mm -hmm. I'm in my mid 60s now. Are you really? It, yeah. Oh my God, you seem so ageless, man, really. Mm, wait till you hear the noise I make when I get up from this thing. But, <sighs> but yeah. Is that sex? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But he, uh, the point was that, you know, uh, I played Radio City Music Hall. Wow. And sold out to, in one day, we sold out two shows in, in one night. Is that pretty exciting? Well, here's the, here's the thing. So seven, I think it holds like six, 7,000 people. Mm -hmm. So between the shows, I was out looking at like 7th Avenue or whatever it is in New York. My, my wife was there mm -hmm. and there were 7,000 people walking out of the building as 7,000 people were lined up to come in. And, and the cops in the middle of Manhattan in New York City where there were stanchions and they're, they're, they, were, they were helping traffic flow and all these people were coming out in the middle of Manhattan, this... Uh, you know, this idiot kid from Toronto is looking out the window from backstage at Radio City Music Hall. And uh, my wife said to me, isn't this amazing? I, go, I don't know. And she goes, well, what do you mean? And this is truly how I feel. I said, well, we're in New York. There's 10 million people in New York. 9,985,000 people in this town don't give a shit to buy a ticket. Right. Right. There's always millions. So, which breaks my heart. You just said yeah. they don't like me. Yeah. 14,000, but 14,000 out of many. 10 million people. Mm. And you know, as a comedian, and this is how it feels for girls and, and wherever in life. And I've talked to every comedian about this. When you're on stage, you could be kicking ass and killing and you see one oh, person. Yeah. And you can feel where they are. Right. Isn't that weird? Yeah. And it, it, you're drawn to the one person that's yeah. going, this is fucking he he or she hates you, doesn't like what's going on, yeah. wants to watch. It doesn't matter that there's thousands you laughing can't even and hear them almost. No, right. So I don't know why, and that's, I know that he's asking about romantic, like who broke your heart, but that breaks my- like, Right, that, that heartbreak is somewhere built into, baked into a comedian. Well, it's, it's baked into all of us. You know, when you're in love or you love somebody and they don't love you back, that's yeah. what your heart is broken. And it's rejection. Mm. All it is is rejection. You want to be loved. You want to be accepted as much as you Acceptance, want that person. Yeah. And, and whether it's in, in an audience, whether it's just somebody on Twitter who's calling you a fucking idiot oh, and, yeah. or pointing out, you know, physical or shit about you. Get called, yeah. Y you know, but it's. I get that it's funny, and I know intellectually that sometimes it's funny. But my heart gets broken every day, every minute, and we have to. We real, and this comes from tons of therapy. Nobody can actually break your heart; they can hurt your heart. Yeah. But you can. You know, you have to be. You have to give yourself enough uh, inner strength, and I think that's both of us as comedians the the strength to get up in front of strangers and try to be accepted by people we don't know yeah is what we fight every day against that heartbreak yeah though it's i don't sit in a dark room with a comforter asking strangers questions i think he's got bigger problems uh, than he heartbreak. might he might have you need to pay his electric bill too that should look a little bit alarming like you couldn't even turn on the light for a question <laughs> <laughs> what a creep what a real beautiful creep. I mean, he's heartbroken because the electric company <laughs> know, yeah. turned off his shit. Look at this guy. Let's play one more here for Howie. Theo, Howie, Premature Nick. What's up, gentlemen? I hope uh, y'all are doing all right. This is Oliver from North Carolina. Uh, What's he rubbing? Howie, I was wondering before, uh, no. you know, oh. the, the shiny look you have going up there, uh, what was your hair history like? And uh, Hair history? It's kind of a weird phrase, hair history, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, tell us a story about uh, when you had hair and uh, what, the, what that was like. What do you miss about the hair? Do you miss anything? Tell us a story about when you had hair and what was that like? <laughs> what what kind of stuff? There it is. Oh, wow, There's look how before. handsome you were, Howie. Dude, you kind of look a little bit like Melissa Via Senior. Can we bring a picture of her up? <laughs> I do. <laughs> In this picture, and I and both of you guys are very, very talented voiceover artists as well. You know who I look but like you as do a look young a guy? Bit. I look like, you should put up the picture. That it's online, Nick. Well, put up Melissa first. But then, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Can we get another one where it looks Am even I her? more? I don't have a hair story. Oh, right there. No, up, oh, right, no, right, left, left. One more, left, to the right end. there. 
That looks like me. <laughs> there you go. A little that's bit. a little emo-ish. But I could see. Yeah, that's a little emo Phillips. Yeah, the haircut. <clears throat> but, the, but the thing about, I look like the kid from Stranger Things. Put up the picture of me, as Howie Mandel, and what's that kid's name? Uh, Boss Rutan? No. Howie Mandel and oh, Stranger yeah. Things kid, and they have a picture of me at 16, and I look exactly like the kid. Wow. The, there's, there's usually two pictures of me together online. He's a when handsome I'm, kid. Howie, Howie with hair and Stranger Things maybe is a thing to look at. Do you have it? Is it coming up? Howie with hair and the Stranger Things guy. They, they come up, there's a split screen usually together. W w w Howie with hair and the Stranger Things guy. No, let's get, keep going. Keep going. No, no, no. It is that guy right there in the middle, but th there's an exact picture of me Find it online. Oh, wait, wait, keep going. Keep going down. Th that picture there in the middle, in the middle, and the, th the kid from Stranger Things. Wow. Find the kid from Stranger Things. So that's me at about 15. Oh, my God, bro. Were you, something happened? What do you look mean? like somebody something? left you somewhere. Where was that taken? What, what are you seeing that I don't see that it looks like, like I was left someplace? Were you like left at a, it seemed like you were like Robert Plant or something or, um, not that. Who am I thinking of? You look like, uh, but, um, um oh e I look like a little rolling girl. stone i look like a little girl i'm a no, little you girl don't how we don't ever say that you don't think that looks like a little girl yeah a little a pretty girl though thank you you think i'm pretty i think you are actually i know i think you have a I nice think I, I think we've pointed out today that i'm pretty <laughs> and delicious <laughs> Do you have the splits? Do you have the split on it? Never mind. This guy. It doesn't yeah. matter. But that looks like a kid from, there's a kid from Stranger Things right now that looks exactly like that. Yeah. There he is. Finn. I put Howie Mandel and Finn. Mm, I did. And it didn't come up to both of us? Yeah, it didn't. Oh. But I look like that kid, right? Oh, yeah. Wow. Look at that. Wowie. <laughs> Wowie. Um, we had a question Talk about that, Stranger Things. Yeah, man, that's and that's very handsome boy. That and, was my hair story that your friend asked for. And that's tell it. us a story about when you had hair. Do you miss it or not? Do you think it's coming back? No, I don't miss it. I'll be honest with you. Did I, it get picked up for an, another season? <laughs> no, but I still I like to like I like to do that to pretend I have bangs. <laughs> I like to flip my head. I don't miss hair. You know what? I, you know what's interesting? When you don't have hair, mm -hmm. how much time I have now? Like how much from the from the moment you get up in the morning, you don't realize how much time you put into your hair. Oh yeah, I know you brush your teeth, but you move your you move your hair. You don't want to answer the door. I don't have to touch anything. Yeah. So I save a lot of time with adjusting my hair. I save a lot of money. There's no shampoo involved. Yeah. I don't have to wash it. It's good. It's and and more importantly, it's. Uh, I was thinking, and you're you're inspiring me. I was uh, in the '80s. I had a mullet, and I'm mm -hmm. thinking of growing back just the mullet. Oh, I think that would be beautiful. Just, I'd like the bald, but I would like to have just a mullet. Oh yeah, because it's. Uh, you've well, brought it, back, you've brought back the mullet. You know what's funny yeah. is I've, about two and a half years ago, I looked at a picture, all the pictures of myself, and I was like, man, I've never had long hair. Uh, and I, I and I want to know what that's like in my life. I'd never had it, right? Except when I was really, really young. But I don't remember that. So I was like, "Well, I'll grow it out." And now I feel more comfortable than I've ever felt in my whole life. Really? Yeah. Why? Like I don't feel like I have hair. It's like look at my hair. It just feels like it just feels like an express a natural expression of myself. And I've noticed a lot more men growing manes. You know, there's a lot of long. Is that what hair. you're calling it? Not a not a mullet. Not a mullet. Yeah, it's just kind of long. That's not hair. a mullet. No, I think a mullet, you have to like, well, in Canada, it's like a hockey haircut. Like there, they're more, it's like hockey players kind of have them. Mullets. They call them mullets? Well, it's like serious. I guess serious, it's a mullet. Serious in the front, party in the back, right? Well, I'm worried about going out of business in the front and still partying in the back. That's what you want to do, that skullet. Oh. And that's that beautiful. Skullet. Dude, if you grew a skullet, bro, you get free fish anywhere where I'm from, for probably for life. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it not because I like to look. I'm going to do it for the fish. Oh, tilapia? <laughs> oh, my Till you God. you can't stop you, bro. You could have as much tilapia as you wanted, man. Everywhere you go, people will fill your mouth with fish. Where I'm from. For a skullet. Oh, to see a skullet? Yeah. People you don't mean a skillet. Them. No, no, no. I'm talking about going out of business in the front, but still partying we're in the back. We're closed because there's a party <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in the back. Yeah, we're closed. No business. Nothing's going on no in the front. No business in the back. And a full party in there. <laughs> but no, you've got it happening. I like your hairstyle. Um, 
let's talk real quick about the comedy store. Yeah. Do you, was the time when you were coming up at the comedy store, do you look back on that as one of the best parts of your career? Do you look at, like, what do you look, like, as an educational part? Did you look, do you look at that as a time when you made most of your friendships? Or I didn't was make it friends, but I'll tell you. Competitive? It, like, just kind of give me some of that. I don't think the comedy store will ever be like it was. And I still work there and I still love it. Yeah. And that's where I write. But that was the epicenter of everything. And I mean everything. You know, I, I'm of the belief that, you know, in the early 70s or late 60s, rock and roll was everything. You know, Woodstock, it was mm -hmm. where the youth got its, uh, you know, political lilt mm -hmm. it's where it got its fashion from it's where you know peace love and rock and roll oh, that yeah. was the, and then you know uh, rock and roll started dying out and disco became big but disco was kind of uh, uh, there wasn't any real substance i don't think it really spoke to you know the studio 54 and right. it was a drug but it but, was like dancing and drugs but it didn't really but i'm friends whole... with this guy uh, rick newman who opened up catch a rising star and mitzi got the comedy store going and the improv going and and comedy just exploded as the voice of the youth and everything we watched on television so when you looked at people like freddie prince who blew up and it was the first time you know a uh, hispanic led a, a sitcom right and johnny carson was pulling all the great young comics from the comedy store and that's where they were just exploding and getting their own you know from billy crystal to robin williams and i came out there and i watched richard pryor each and every night yeah work on his set to put together for live on the sunset strip People were lined up for three shows a mile down Sunset Boulevard. It was the most exciting place on earth. The biggest movie stars in the world were showing up, you know, just to see the next young comic or the Richard Pryors. That doesn't exist anymore. I mean, it's fun and it's entertaining and there's a lot of good people, but you felt like you were on this new, exciting wave mm. of what became, you know, and then sit, th that's where all your sitcoms were cast out of. That's where all the monologues were made and the movies and, and, and people who were filling in for the hosts of shows. Joan Rivers would come there mm -hmm. and Rodney Dangerfield would come there and, and David Brenner would come there. You know, they were filling in for Johnny Carson and Johnny Carson, you know, it was a comedian who would come there and work out his act to take to Vegas. And in the main room, that you'd have Count Basie and his orchestra and Buddy Rich. And up in the belly room at the comedy store, you I saw Whoopi Goldberg as a wow. young comic show up and um, uh, audition for Mike Nichols and Steven Spielberg and eventually got cast from that night in The Color Purple, wow. which made her career. You would watch people just explode there. And right now it's, and I think now there's a resurgence, but that was the epicenter of right. everything that was comedy. And that was before I mentioned earlier, JFL. Now that's a place where mm -hmm. people can get seen and be seen. And yeah, I went career. to JFL Toronto last year, actually, and had a nice time. I yeah. didn't own it yet. You didn't? Not last year, but now, now I do. Now we're talking. Now I'm the boss. No, now yeah. I need to go next year. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, it's different over there now. Do you think uh, that comedy will ever be like the voice of the people again, or is it too sedate? Is it too um, fenced in and governed these days by? I feel like that was the epicenter, and I feel like the voice of the people now is much more digital. You know, and whether it's from podcasts or from YouTube or from Instagram or wherever, that's those kind of lilt are you know our feelings and and our thoughts and our pop culture. But that being said, the art form of stand up comedy is alive and thriving at the comedy store even today. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, it's almost amazing sometimes, like the moments you can have in there. You know, it's very, there are view, very few places that kind of, and just by virtue of what stand up comedy is, that kind of draw in a lot of people of like mind mm -hmm. who have very, uh, who vary in their comedy styling. So on any given night, they could see you and 
Joe Rogan and anybody they see on Melissa TV. Melissa Senior Or me. And, and, you know, you could just one after another, Chris D'Elia or, you know, all these people you see, Lee. On, you, you see on television on any given night, it's all there and that's a gathering yeah. place. Whereas I don't know that there's a club for music where you can go in and see even more than one it'd be like name. bcbg it would be like something like that now or something right whatever that club nothing that, that but but how many groups that you know or listen to or stream or what can you see in one building whereas stand-up comedy this is a buffet of great art yeah that's cool wow way to finish that off what what just that that piece about that and i was about like about the oh, comedy this... store i think that's why these guys are here this i is... was like i don't know if this i was like how's this again this it... is so weird that we're, we're doing up? we're multitasking because we're doing a podcast mm -hmm. at the same time we're part of a documentary yeah. are you aware of that oh it's the dark arts man there's a lot of levels going on i wonder if the people watching are fascinated at watching a documentary while there's a podcast going <laughs> i think they could be that's the beauty of the comedy store. See, the comedy store, it's just comedy. Yeah. It's just stand-up comedy. This is the difference between then when I went. Yeah. You saw one thing on one place, and now. Now it's been Now you're watching. Places. This is about multitasking. But even now, this documentary, right now, we're watching two comics. Right. Who are at the comedy store who do comedy, talking about doing comedy on a podcast. Yeah. In the 70s, you didn't watch. You didn't people. have that. You never had the moment again. Have we lost the value of a moment a little bit, do you think? Because then, like now a moment is so, it can be just so, I don't know. Does that make any sense to you? Have we lost the value of a moment? Well, here's what we lost. You know, I believe I've been diagnosed with ADHD. Yeah. But I also think that our culture promotes that. And, you know, when we were growing up, I'm older than you, but mm -hmm. when you watch TV, you just watch TV. When you went to a club, you watched a comedy, a comedian. And now when you turn on TV, um, in the corner of the screen, there's another piece of information that usually has nothing to do with the show you're watching. Right. There can be a strip along the bottom with information going through, which you're reading the news or the weather at the same time or the right. time. You, you know, you're getting all pieces of, and even when you buy a magazine, I don't doubt that that many people buy magazines anymore. You know, you, you they'll finish the story on page 86, which is like, so you can get start another story. Right. And by the same token, we're doing a documentary and a podcast at the same, same time. time. So you talk about the moment. We're at a much, in this time, in this millennium, we're at a much faster pace where more has to be going on to hold somebody's attention for even a moment mm. i'd like to take a moment but if you take a moment people will go away yeah and do you think that 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 do you think we, that we'll have side effects from that of like like oh i think we do i think that's why you know most of uh, a lot of young people are on ritalin yeah you know and because they're trying to focus because it's really hard to focus because oh, hard. even if it's innate in who you are it's also like you got the, the two candles with two different scents. Oh yeah. You talk about ADD. That's doing exactly, both right now. That's exactly it. And a painting of Chris yourself. Chris Farley. So, <clears throat> oh, that's Chris Farley. Yeah. I didn't realize. We need to let people so know when they come in. Yeah, that's Chris Farley. No, now I see it, yeah. but I didn't because there's so many pictures of you all around. <laughs> right on. There's. Um, we're uh, we're going to wrap up in just a second. Kevin what? Farley, his brother just texted me yesterday actually and said, "Hey man, I love the picture of my brother in the studio, which oh, is sick. really really Dad nice." By yeah, Brady. Are you giving me a signal? No. I am, though. Oh, I'm finished? No. You're going to go on forever, man. Wow. How long do you so think... So I didn't realize. At first, I felt bad because there were, you know, because I saw the outreach yesterday to get input, but I didn't realize that there was going to be, like, two people... I know. ...with uh, three talents lot. and two questions. I had no idea. No, no. And now that I've seen it all together... I know. I realized there was so much more than I could have ever <laughs> expected. <laughs> No, it's great. Look, our, I mean, our listeners just like to kind of just, you know, know what's going on and just just hear what's up. And Well, watch my Showtime special. Listen to two people talk. Starting on Showtime. In, when on is the, it starting? January 18th. And watch Deal or No Deal every Wednesday. Um, was episodes. it nerve-wracking with the special? Because I saw you a lot before that in the store. Like, you were in and out a lot. It was. You were getting up on stage a lot. I was. You know, it was nerve-wracking, and I did it at my own club. I have my own club in Atlantic City. Do you really? Yeah. What is it, the Borgata? 
It's at the Hard Rock. Oh, it's wow. It's called the Howie Mandel Comedy Club. Is it really? Yeah. I, I don't know how we came up with the name, but. I have an idea. <laughs> um, my, my mom thought of it. I didn't. Uh, how was your mom? Good. Yeah. She's okay. She's a cute lady. I remember Thank I met you, her. Thank you. You met her. Yeah. yeah. She's doing okay. She's up in Canada. Oh, yeah. I've heard of uh, that. And what else did we want to touch on? I think we might have. I think we're done. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. The, the fact that we're done yet we're still talking and recording <laughs> yeah. is just uncomfortable. <laughs> I wonder if it's uncomfortable, as uncomfortable for the listener as it is for us. <laughs> I think it probably, I think they love it. Really? Yeah. But they've, okay, so you, they tuned in or whatever, they clicked on this podcast, mm -hmm. you know, with you talking to me. And we've just announced that it's over. Yeah. I would imagine some of them just turned off whatever uh, no. instrument they're... This is when they really turn it up. Really? I think so. I think, yeah, a lot of the people that are listening to podcasts, eavesdroppers, people that would be eavesdropping, peeping Tom kind of But people. they know it's over. It's over, and it's just awkward. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's been awkward. Like, I don't know if, if like, I'm... Because I, I'm not familiar. Like, do you have, a like, a wrap-up song or nope. uh, nothing? It we just got nothing. stops. <laughs> Nick got fired from working with Corolla. You know, I'm doing my best. I'm 30, about 40 days off of pornography right now. And wait, only 40 days? I talked to you a year ago, and you were off of it. And I and I got back on. Wow. <laughs> and it didn't go that great. I mean, it went fine, you know, but it would it wasn't like long term, you know. What was the longest you've been off of it? Is this it? 40 days? Yeah, maybe actually. And is it like AA, like good. if you're off of pornography for a lot, like do you get, I know that uh, at AA in a year you get a birthday party and you'll get a. Yeah, you get a chip. But when you're off of pornography for a long time, what do you get? A hard on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was on a plane and I got a hard on and some lady brought me out of sleep. I was sleeping on a plane, had an erection, woke me up, told the flight attendant. They're like, uh, sir, you need to watch your body. That's what she said. No, is that serious? Yeah. I got an erection in my sleep, man. But like, how, you know, the truth is when you're sitting on a plane, you don't know, you, I feel uncomfortable but putting my elbow on the armrest. So <laughs> oh, you yeah. must, that must oh, be yeah. worse. It when really does hit When your there. dick is on Spill her armrest. I'm trying to get my elbow <laughs> here. But what, I, why didn't you, I would have just taken oh, offense. I was upset. To, yeah, with her. Oh, I was like, very what the upset. fuck are you looking at? And I even told her husband. I, I said, this ain't for you, lady. This ain't your butt. This is a you know nocturnal boner I had when I was sleeping. This I made this, not for you. You know, I let her know that this was had nothing to do. But the, the the flight attendant came over to warn yeah, you? Give me a little blanket. How crazy is that, bro? For yeah. an erection in my sleep, man. She gave you a little blanket? Just I mean, a tiny like a napkin? I mean, one of those hot towels? <laughs> <laughs> just a little hot towel? What that's so bizarre. <laughs> I mean, that's the was, flight attendant. What did she say to the flight attendant? The blanket, I'll admit, was about this big. <laughs> so it's like you were waving a white flag to yeah, yeah. surrender. But the, but the thing is that that's so bizarre that Very somebody bizarre. would like even if it happened. Yeah. And even if you go oh, when it God, did, look happen. at that sleeping guy. Look at that sleep. But yeah. for somebody to point it out, that's what I thought. That's what I. And what'd she say? She just like your body, sir. You know. And I was like, excuse. And I didn't know what was going on. I thought I'd peed myself. And so I was like, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't, you know, this used to happen when I was in, in my twenties, but this is, you know, not recently. And then I'm like, oh man, this is what's going on. I had on sweats, lean sweatpants, and she just got offended. And she then she told her husband, and I, that's when I started looking at her husband. I was like, dude, tell your lady to, you know, or ask your wife if maybe you guys can. I mean, y'all haven't had a bone in the house in a while or something, you know? It was just awkward, man. And then it made me feel bad, like I was wrong for having an erection, you know. So, so that that's what got you back onto pornography, or no? oh no, that was probably I mean you know, but now I notice more erections, and if I'm on a plane, I get an erection. Right, right. You get that? Uh, no, but uh, I guess I didn't see the movie. Is that what Snakes on the Plane is about? No, oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking just a regular, oh. even just dude. If I even hear a loud plane go by, I'll get strong, you know. Really? Yeah. Jumbo jets? I mean, I wouldn't call it a jumbo jet. I'd call it maybe a puddle jumper. You know? <laughs> Cessna. Kind of, yeah. Look at my Cessna. Yeah, I got a little bit more of a Cessna. Six. Will we ever see a reboot of Bobby's World? That was a question that came in. Yes. Yeah, I'm working on it now. I'm going to meetings now. I hope I come back. I would love to come back. Wow. 
We yeah. do too. I don't know who yeah. that is. I t- I've, I've told a lot of people, but you know, that's the same voice. I, I got a, it's the, that it's Bobby a, voice is other voice. The gremlin voice. Yeah, the gizmo. Yeah. Oh, man. It's also Skeeter from uh, Muppet Babies. Yeah. Skeeter. Same voice. Dude, I was at a birthday party and I got cornered by the guy who does Kermit from Muppet Babies. Really? Yeah, I got cornered against him and he'd been drinking and uh, accidentally leaned Hey, against uh, you want to go? <laughs> just hey, like you feel bomb? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and oh, I, look, it's still bomb. And I leaned against a uh, stove and started up some pizza boxes on fire. That was at Harlan Williams' house. Um, <laughs> that's a true story at his Christmas party. Well, there's a fire. There seems um, to be a fire. Theo started a fire <laughs> with the pizza. What are you leaning so back? <laughs> it's so weird to see the Kermit guy. <laughs> And Kermit's flammable, so he really was alone. Oh, hi, Theo Bar. <laughs> that's the, I don't know if that's a good Kermit, oh, but boy. I just imagine that's how the guy talks. Yeah. I can't do, I can do, uh, hey, hey, Peter. I don't know what that one is. I think. It's somebody who's looking for Peter. Something, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> hey, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used oh, to man. think it was so funny to go on stage and I would have these long drawn out explanations. This next character I'm going to do is a man by the name of Gary who um, works in a in a packaging factory who um, is late for work because uh, the bus hasn't shown up and I would go into <laughs> and it would just be a long explanation until somebody in the audience would go go fuck yourself <laughs> for me it was always funnier just to have the <laughs> just the explanation just uh, just nothing yeah. I would do I would do an, an improv night I'd go a Howie Mandel improv night where I would just take suggestions my record is 40 minutes no 40 minutes of taking suggestions like not doing anything wow just okay give me an occupation <laughs> give me a favorite color Tell me, give me a state. Tell me what state. <laughs> give me a sense of just how many, until somebody goes, what the fuck That's is good. it? Yeah. Did you ever, <laughs> did you ever uh, meet Andy Kaufman or no? I want, yes, is, yes, is the answer. And I used to watch him and he was at the comedy store in those days. Right. And he was wrestling. unique, I'm sure. Was he? So unique. So unique. And I did uh evening at the improv with I went to watch his taping where and that's on tape where he had a boil on his neck mm-hmm. and each person was invited up from the audience to feel the boil on his neck. Oh wow. It's it was pretty yeah. I, I loved him. And I loved that commitment that he had. Yeah, I could go all the that way. Was... It was the theater, really, in my mind. Hmm. And Mike Binder who is doing this documentary, oh, is yeah. the director and producer of this documentary and a great comic in his own right. Do you know that his connection to Andy Kaufman, do mm-hmm. you? No? So Andy Kaufman was on um, Taxi, mm-hmm. right? Played yep, Latka yep. on Taxi. Yeah. Mike Binder was Andy Kaufman's stand-in, would be there all week. Andy Kaufman would not come to the show until tape night. Wow. So all of it was done with Mike Binder. Really? Yes. And do they look similar or not? No, to me, well, oh, maybe that the, in in Violet, but it's really weird because also wow. Mike Binder is said okay that he'd like to do your podcast, and I'm here filling in as a stand-in till he gets here. He is, is he, Mike coming? No. Oh, Mike's not coming actually. No. Oh well, well, thanks for. Are we ending again? Yeah, we're gonna end again. What, Ed, what is the record for ending a podcast? Like, how many times have you tried to get a guest to go away? That's a good question. Probably three times, you know? So it's been two. One more time, and I'm out of here. <laughs> okay, right on. <laughs> He's like a genie. Um, Why is that a genie? I don't know. I just A genie is that you rub a bottle and then make three wishes. Yeah. What does this have to do with that? It doesn't. Just three. Yeah, just three. <laughs> just a bad reference, dude. Wow, you guys are like in... Oh, we're sync. Sync. Oh, there's bad sync over here. That's what it's. I love that he gets you. <laughs> yeah. Nick gets That's you. Why it works. <laughs> and there was no even thought, no hesitation. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three. He <laughs> said three. Yeah. A genie did three wishes. I get Theo. That's it's why we bad, work so man. well together. It is, man. That's why we work so well together. Uh, Howie Mandel, thank you so much for being here. And thanks for um, always being so friendly and supportive, man. You always are. And it, what was the question? You do a great job of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. This has been fun. Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's
gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild. 